Good morning guys, I'm Blackie for Shaman's Forge Bushcraft. This morning I'm going to talk about part of my system that I use for packing and for camping. Now, I've already gone over the two other major parts of it. My system is based upon, the very core of it is my haversack, which I've already done a video on. And if you refer back to that, I'll show you all my video, all my haversack components and their basic use, how I see it. The other part of that is my canteen cook set. And I've done a video on that. Refer back to that to see how I carry my water, my aluminum foil, my all that stuff for cooking. My final piece of the puzzle is my big pack. Now this is my base pack is what I call it. Because I'm going up to set up a base of operations when I use it. Because I'm going to canoe in, hike in, whatever. I am planning on coming here to camp. And so I'm bringing this with me to make myself comfortable. The contents of this pack very rarely vary throughout the year. Now, I do change out the sleeping bag, and I'll point that out in a minute. But this is the basic base pack that I use when I go. Now, it's a German Alpine pack with heavy canvas and good reinforced straps. I like that. It holds up better. I did the ultralight backpacking stuff for a while, and although it was very light to carry, quite often those packs did not hold up for more than a year or two of occasional carry. Where I was camping out every two or three weekends, they normally didn't last six months. These last years, yes, they're heavier, but they're durable. Now, I like the bucket style, but I also like at least one or two pouches. I came up with Alice packs. I don't particularly care for the Alice Pack so much because it spreads too far from your back. It wants to pull you backwards. This one stays relatively compact up and down, but is wide, and I like that. Now, I have a waterproof liner inside of it. Now, this can be completely sealed up, just like a water bag, to keep my contents dry if I'm expecting bad weather. It can also be used as an emergency water carrier. Right in the top, first thing, is my sleeping bag now since it's winter this is a blue kazoo you got me it's a blue kazoo bag it's a down bag they're about 325 dollars and i picked this one up surplus because the zipper was messed up now i typically sleep in a sleeping bag unless it's true bitter cold by flipping it upside down putting my feet in the bottom and throwing it over me like a quilt. That's the way I typically sleep. So the zipper being gone doesn't affect me. Now in the summertime, this will be one of the green patrol bags or I have a British bag called a Merlin bag that was British issue for quite a while. It's also very small and compact and it fits in this bag as well. This weighs less than two pounds. My primary shelter, my Hennessy hammock steaks, tarp, everything is in here. Now if you'll refer back to my video I did on the Hennessy, that's this shelter system. And this is my primary means of getting up off the ground, out of the bugs, out of the mud, and getting a good night's sleep. That and the bag combined give me most of the year comfort. Only in the dead of winter and the ultra cold do I go from this to a, a uh, tarp ground set with a big fire to stay warm. But at most time I camp in this hammock. I have a rain set, and this comes from the backpacking type shop. It's an Adirondack type jacket and a pair of pants. These are rain shirt and pants. And I use them as alternative clothing as well. So if my clothes get wet and muddy and I need to change into something dry, I put these on. I also use them as a wind barrier. I also use them in the, at uh, night in the winter. I put them on on the outside of my clothes as a thermal barrier. Much like putting a trash bag on helps hold heat in, these help hold heat. A little bit of camp pillow. Sleeping in a hammock hurts my neck sometimes, so I put this, it opens up, and put it in the nape of my neck back here. It's also great when I've got a little arm ache or something, I can tuck it up under an arm or whatever. It weighs nothing, and it gives me a lot of comfort. And if you're not sleeping comfortably out there, you're not gonna be comfortable. 
You don't go to the woods to rough it. You go to the woods to smooth it, like Ness Monk said. If you're going out there and, man, I endured a lot of pain, you're doing it wrong. That pain will wear you down in a real situation over time. I need to sleep. This is helps. Now, in here is a aftermarket U.S. Army type poncho with uh, hooks, straps, and etc. to make a small tarp shelter. I can also use this as an additional tarp in addition to my Hennessy so that whenever I set up, I've got a dry area over here to the side, or maybe a little lean-to to fire on it, whatever, because I do not want fire to be anywhere near my Hennessy. So I'm going to set it up over there. This also allows me that when it looks like it's going to be bad inclement weather, my Hennessy, I take my pack and hook it to the tree in front of the Hennessy. So when I come out of the Hennessy, there's my pack. I then take this tarp, throw it over the Hennessy, come forward, pull it around the tree, and snap it up the far side of the tree spreading it out. This makes like a front porch. When I get out, if I have to get out during the night to answer nature's call, I reach up and unhook my pack, put it back in the Hennessy, stick my head up through the hole in the poncho, unsnap it, go answer nature's call, come back, throw it over, reach around and re-snap it, put my pack up and go back in. Quick and handy. Couple of trash bag liners, you know what they're for. Carry it out, carry it in, whatever you got to do. Okay. I use the large Alice liner in this. It gives me more room at the top to gather it up and tie it up like that. And it's got a cord with it. Now, most of the time when I have this in here, I do it inside out like this. I put the black rubber to the inside of the pack and I put the nylon side to the part that I'm going to stick stuff in so that my stuff doesn't wear a hole in the rubber. Now, in the back of this pack is a pocket. In here I carry a camp towel. You know what they're used for. They're also great for bandaging and stuff like that and just drying off. I carry a ground cloth. Now this is a uh, reinforced shelter. It's called a snow pad. And it's issued to the German military and it's for laying out on the snow. It's a pretty good size. I think it's five by seven feet. And I use this on damp ground, whatever. And can be used as emergency tarp as well. One pair of heavy leather U.S. Army gloves. Great for protecting your hands. And in the back of the pack is the fold up shooter's pad. Now this is my basic ground cloth that I can fold and half sit on. And this also goes inside the Hennessy for me to lay on at night as additional insulation. Now if it's going if it's winter and I'm going to still be using the hammock, then what I'm going to do is I have a under quilt that I can carry with my Hennessy and it simply strings underneath and that's the Hennessy uh, issue one it comes up out the size of your fist and it's a type of foam rubber. In addition to that I'll take a wooby or poncho liner to us old folks and put between it and the bed to act as an additional layer. I've, I've camped in that down high teens. And with a down sleeping bag, that insulation, I'm a very warm sleeper. I can't talk for you, but I'm a very warm sleeper. I've been comfortable. Front pack up front, quick to get at, is my headlamp for light, of course. Quick handy grab cordage, pair of binoculars, more cordage, spare spoon, Whistle, backup, compass, thermometer. The other pouch I carry, I picked up this little travel kit, and it's got uh, medication for me. I carry sinus stuff, 
in case I get out here and for whatever reason pollen, whatever, I get a little bit of a head cold that, you know, you can't breathe, that's what that's for. I carry standard pain pills, aspirin, etc. I carry something for my arthritis because when that's flaring up, mm -mm. I carry a toothbrush and I carry two or three straws that, you know how I make my fire straws, well I put toothpaste inside the straw instead of the cotton Vaseline. So now I've got something I can pull the cap off and squeeze a little bit out to a toothpaste without having to take a, a tube. And a few of the little sundries, I carry Imodium for that and I carry uh, Pepto-Bismol tablets. Because the two most things that's probably going to bother you are your stomach's going to get upset and you're going to need to stop. Emergency field dressing, camp soap, toilet paper, because I am not a barbarian, my first aid kit, my backup flashlight, insect repellent, that's it. Now that's all I'm carrying. I know what you're saying, Blackie, where's the food at? Well, I carry food in here as well since I'm not actively going, I didn't put it in here. Now that's going to usually be a field strip, one or two field strip MREs, perhaps just an MRE um, entree. And I put it uh, down on the sides of the pack so I can easily get to it. Oh, by the way, these have pass-through so I can slide a tomahawk in here or a tool of some kind to go all the way through the bottom. So, Food to me, I realize I'm not going to starve to death in three days. Food is just not that big a deal. I'm going to be out normally about anywhere from 48 hours to 72 hours. So, I'm planning on one meal a day to carry with me. I also will carry instant potatoes. I will carry bannock mix. I will carry rice. I will carry some sort of soup mix. Something I can add water to and make. I'll also carry the MRE. Normally one entire MRE meal and maybe one or two additional entrees. Strip down and put in a very small compact area. There's plenty of room in the pack for it. While I'm out here is when I'm foraging. I'm looking for what's edible around me. And as I go, I forage. I'm planning on fishing. I carry a fishing kit. And with that fishing kit, I'll try my luck. If it's hunting season, I'm toting my gun. I may try for a squirrel. That's part of it to me, is not only the coming out, but what you're doing while you're out here. I'm going to try to forage. Try out. A lot of times I'll bring out my manuals for wild animal plants, and this time I'm trying to find cleavers, you know, or uh, edible clovers, or wood sorrel, or whatever. And I'll try to locate it, try it out, try some recipes I've tried online, you know, found online and see if it's something worthwhile for me to even look for. I have found quite a few out here that I really like. I really like green briar and a few other things. I really do not like certain other ones. It's just my personal taste. So, food becomes secondary. Now I'm concentrating on my skills with the food being a secondary consideration. I'm not gonna starve. I've got food as a backup. I hope this gives you some ideas, guys, on how to set up your pack. Please leave your comments, like, subscribe, whatever you wish to do. I really, really, truly appreciate all your comments, all your suggestions. I learn a lot from you. I'm Blackie for Shaman's Forge Bushcraft, wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.